Hi, this is Dr. Emmanuel Oboda. I'm a lecturer here in the United Kingdom. And before now, I've been working in NHS hospital as a clinical, uh, say, hematology um, and transfusion scientist, okay? So I'm going to um, talk about APTT today. I want to start off by saying that APTT measures intrinsic factors. So it determines how effective intrinsic factor of factors is performing. Although APTT can also be suggestive of any problem from the common pathway. Okay, remember that both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, they all meet at the common pathway. So any problem from the common pathway can affect both pathways like intrinsic and extrinsic. So but APTT measures intrinsic pathway. So the some of the quick common question they will ask you is that APTT of 40 or 50 as the case may be okay what does it indicate so it means that the APTT is raised or it means that it is prolonged or it means that it is high depending on any word that is best for you but what that means then is that there is something wrong because that shouldn't happen to a normal patient a healthy patient the first thing you are going to do is to check whether the sample is clotted again you check your sample integrity there is no clot the sample is well filled, it was not underfilled. Then you start thinking, oh, maybe there is something going on in the intrinsic pathway. But before you jump into whether there's a problem in the intrinsic pathway, you are better off starting off with asking yourself, is the quest is the patient on any anticoagulant such as heparin? Because APTT measures the dosage of heparin. Okay, so it helps you to, to measure the dosage of heparin because heparin targets mostly intrinsic coagulation pathway. Okay, so with that, when APTT is raised, you now check okay, is the patient on anticoagulant such as heparin? If the patient is on anticoagulant such as heparin, that explains the result. However, if the patient is not on eating any anticoagulant such as heparin, you need to investigate further because you then need to find out whether the problem is from the clotting factor or is there anything inhibiting the clotting factor from functioning very well. Okay, Because of that, you then need to do a mixing study. I've already made a video about INR, PT INR regarding mixing study, so if you've not watched the video, you need to search for a biomedical scientist job okay raise uh, pt and uh, you should be able to see that anyway so when aptt is raised and the sample is not clotted and the patient is not on heparin you then need to do a missing study so for aptt it is called ap50 meaning 50 percent of the patient sample and 50 percent of the um, control sample or known sample so you mix them together once you mix these two samples together, you repeat your APTT, okay? When you repeat the APTT, if the result correct or if the result now become normal, no longer prolonged, no longer raised, no longer high, depending on, you know, the one that is best for you to use. So if it is no longer prolonged because you've mixed both the control sample and the patient and you run the APTT, it is now normal or it is now corrected. What does that mean? It then suggests again that there is a factor deficiency because why would that correct? Because you mix with a control sample. Because the control sample, the factors in the control sample or the known sample that you mix with the patient sample has compensated the deficiency of the clotting factors in that patient sample. So that's why you could suggest that it is a factor deficiency. Okay, so meaning that race APTT where the person the sample is not clotted the person is not on heparin it could be due to factor deficiency and how could you investigate that you do a mixing study and when you do the mixing study like i've said and the result come back to normal or correct it indicates okay that there is a deficiency of clotting factor in the sample now sometimes when you do that it is not correct okay you do the mixing study it doesn't correct rather it's still high but you are very sure that you used your control sample and you know that this control sample has all the necessary clotting factors. So why is the sample still raised? It is raised then because there is something possibly in the patient sample that is inhibiting 
both the patient clotting factors and the one in the control sample. And because of that, you cannot say it is an inhibitor. Okay, so this inhibitor can inhibit the clotting factors. So that's why when you do a mixing study of the APTT and it, it correct, it suggests factor deficiency. If it does not correct, it suggests that there is an inhibitor. Okay, and that is what you need to now think. And when you think is a factor deficiency, it is always ideal to further investigate factor assay, doing a factor assay to know the particular factor that is deficient. But if it is not factor deficiency and it is an inhibitor, it is always there to investigate further to find out what is causing the inhibition, such as low post anticoagulant test. Okay, that will help to investigate further to know whether that is that whether it is an inhibitor or not. And that is how you can be able to answer your question when they ask you what do you understand or what do you think about raised APTT. So the question will come like, tell us, what do you think about raised APTT? Or they may say, what do you think about APTT of 40, 50, as the case may be? So you tell them that there are so many things that can lead to that. That number one, you will check the sample integrity to know whether the sample is clotted or not, or whether it's underfilled or not. If you've checked that, and that was not the, it was not clotted, it was not underfilled, that possibly the patient may be on anticoagulant such as heparin. Therefore, that what you are going to do is to investigate and double check whether the patient is on heparin. If you have your, if you do the check and the patient is on heparin, okay, that that explain why the result is raised. However, if the patient is not on heparin, that you might it could be a factor deficiency or an inhibitor. Therefore, you are going to do a mixing study known as AP50, okay? That this AP50 is a mixing of the 50% of the patient sample and the 50% of the control sample or known sample. That when you mix it together, if the result come back to be normal or correct, it means there's a factor deficiency. However, if it does not correct and it's still prolonged, it could be an inhibitor. And that is your answer in such situation so that's how the thing you can go if you like then you can tell them that in a case of a, a factor deficiency okay you do a factor assay or you can if it is not a factor deficiency you think it's an inhibitor you can do lupus anticoagulant that also when a factor deficiency is suspected that fresh frozen plasma can be given because fresh frozen plasma is rich in clotting factor and that is your answer once you give this answer like this that is what is suggested. Sometimes they may ask you a question and said a situation whereby a, a patient has been scheduled for operation, but the APTT is raised. In fact, they may even say that PT RNR is also raised, as the case may be. Once there's a raised clotting profile, once there's a normal clotting profile, you know, before any surgery that need to review that need to be corrected until it is corrected i want you to know that the doctors will not want to proceed with that procedure because if anything goes wrong because there's already a suggestion showing that there's a deranged clotting factors okay meaning that maybe it could be due to factor deficiency or inhibitor as we've been discussing that if the person start bleeding if there's any plan in place the person may bleed to death. So sometimes they may ask you that APTT of 40 or raised APTT and would the doctor go ahead to do the operation? In most cases, the answer may be no because they will not because if they do that, the, person may, the patient may bleed to death. So what they are going to do in some cases, if the patient is on anticoagulant, they may want to reverse that anticoagulant, okay, before uh, going ahead to do and the procedure. So that is some of the answer that you can give to them when it comes to the raised APTT. Remember, APTT measures intrinsic pathway. It's always important to mention that to them when you give your answer. So yeah, that is your answer when it comes to what happened in case of raised APTT as the case may be. The next video I'm going to make will have to be with the D-dimer and then we can look at it and progress from there to then hematology. Like I've said, my plan or my aim is just to make sure that people are able to assess this video and it can help them to prepare for the interview. And once again, I wish all of you all the best and I want you to subscribe and like and share. Thank you very much. Until I come back your way.